in conversation with Esther Short. Esther Short is a freelance writer and author who lives in a personal motto of be kind always and spread joy every day. She believes everyone can live a peaceful, joy-filled life despite hardships and attempt to spread the message in our work and daily life. A favorite thing includes spending time in nature, especially along Lake Superior and advocating for mental health. A fourth book has been published in September of 2024 with several writing projects on the rising. Exa lives in central Minnesota with her husband, four children, a dog and a horse. She invites you to check her out on her website and follow her on Facebook or Instagram. And on today's episode of Auto Interview, it's my utmost player, joy and excitement to offer the show today, Esther Short. How are you doing, Esther? I'm doing great. It's a it's a joy to be here. Absolutely. It's my pleasure, really, to have you on the show today. I'm kind of excited. We're going to be having a conversation around your beautiful work, really. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, Esther, you know, I'd like us to start with a historical fiction novel in the name of Great Water, Big Sea, the Willow Bay series, which I found the description page of it on Amazon to be quite captivating, awesome, compelling to me, really. And I'd like to ask you, how does this book come about? What inspired you to write Great Water, Big Sea? And how did this title name even come to be? Sounds quite uncommon to me. So um, this book was really inspired by my love for Lake Superior. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful lake, but it's one of the great lakes in the mm. United States. And it's just breathtaking, the beauty that's up there. And there's a lot of rich history. And um, I actually started writing the book, the third book in my series, the Willow Bay series, and as I was writing it, I really wanted to go back and tell the story of this family from the beginning. And so I went, I started writing Great Water, Big Sea. Um, it's a play on words. Um, it's actually a very loose translation um, from the Ojibwe um, for Lake Superior, uh, Great Water, Big Sea. And so um, that is the title of the book that I decided to go with based on that. Um, but I really just kind of fell in love with these characters as I was creating them. And um, I really love history. I love Minnesota history. Mm. Um, and so I really wanted to incorporate um, the historical pieces of it. Um, but really just playing, uh, you know, paying homage to um, the, the great people that have lived in the past here in this beautiful state. So... Oh, wow. Interesting, really. I love hearing about that. And it's quite amazing to get to know how the old story came to be and what inspired the making of Great Water, Big Sea. Thanks for sharing, really. Enjoy you talking about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And for readers who haven't read the book yet, and of course, without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we had expect in terms of teams? Picking up great water, big sea. And if you have a copy of the book there, I'd like you to show it to the camera just so it's what it looks like. Beautiful cover, so, even. Yeah. This is Great Water Big Sea. It is um it's it's available um on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and that sort of thing. So um it's it's definitely something I'm very proud of. And it's the first book in my Willow Bay series. So I think some of my favorite things that I like to write about are um, just the hardships that we as people go through oh, wow. and um, how, how amazing people can be in overcoming adversity. And so one of the themes in the book is, is the, um, the main character is really faced with many hardships as as an immigrant to the country, and she um, really has to work hard and faces tragedy and um, really just learning what it means to be human and mm. learning what love is and forgiveness. And so um, there's a lot of a lot of themes kind of around that in just family and friendships and and hardships. So 
Mm. Oh, wow. That's quite amazing, really. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Thank now, following on your response to that, you also have Song of the Lake, which is yes. part of the Willow Bay series. Would you also okay. like to tell us a bit about that as well? Yeah, so Song of the Lake, I'll show you a picture of that. Beautiful. Um, this is the second book in my Willow Bay series, and it's it's a new generation of the family. Um, when I wrote the series, instead of doing um, picking up where I left off on, on my first book, I decided mm. to write about a new generation, um, different hardships. And this book takes place um, in the early 1900s. And so there's just different things going on in history and different hardships that these new characters are facing. There's some mystery and some um, some secrets and surprises and adventure oh. and that sort of thing. And so um, so we are introduced to new characters, but it's a new generation of the family that has settled on Willow Bay. Oh, wow, that's quite amazing, really. I love your take and I love the I love the message in these books and your answers to them actually kind of sounds to be quite amazing and well educative to me. Thanks for sharing, really. Thank you. And I don't I, I I wanted to ask you too, because I don't know how long you're taking us in this Willow Bay series. How much more books should we look forward to or expect more? Or is it only one and two? Um actually, so I I have another book. Um it is this is my author copy I've ordered, or my oh. my proof copy rather. This is Roots of the Bay. Um, it's set to come out um, on Monday, actually, the 30th. Wow. And um, this is the third book in the series. Wow. And I've got um, the fourth book in the series I've actually started writing. It's on my laptop. It's it's in, you know, the very, very early stages of it. But Roots of the Bay is my next. It's the next one. It's a new generation again of the family. It takes place in the 1990s. And um, I really love this story it was actually the one that i started writing and where i mm -hmm. went back and then wrote great water big sea so this is this was a, a book that i started several years ago and fell in love with these characters and so i decided to go back and, and write the other two books before it um so but i i'm really proud of this one it's mm -hmm. been a work in process for um, several years, and I'm excited to finally get it out to to the world. So, oh wow, that's quite amazing to know. Thanks for sharing. I love your description of that. Yeah. So you know, there's this question I like asking authors that come on Hell. I've always been fascinated about our authors, especially novelists like yourself, craft long sentences and bring words together in a way that it eventually makes. A great novel, you know, sentence come together to make paragraph, paragraph coming together to make pages, and pages coming together to make chapters and several chapters, making an eventual interesting novel. And this always leaves me thinking, how do they get the ideas and inspiration to put this words together? You know, now as um, far as writing is concerned, I'd like to ask you too, how do you get your inspirations and ideas? Where do they come from? I love this question. Um, it is it's interesting to me even because I sometimes don't know where it comes from. It just <laughs> <Me shows serious>. up. <laughs> um, the inspiration that I have, you know, there's a book that I wrote, my very first book that I came out with. Um, we were driving back from Iowa, visiting my husband's family in Iowa. Mm. And um, as we were traveling along, I just it was almost like I could see the story as a movie in my head. Mm. And wow. um, I I just could see it on paper and um, almost like a movie in my head. And so I, I get inspired by just being out in nature. I get inspired by being around individuals. Um, I, I've always loved to read and write and the written word, just there's so many beautiful things that can be created with the written mm. word. And so, wow. um, you know, I just, I get inspired by my environment and by being out in the world. And, um, you know, I have a real passion for giving hope and joy to people. And so, mm. um, 
that really plays a part in in the work that I create as well. So. Uh. Oh, wow. That's quite amazing, really. That's very wholesome and quite lovely because actually I think it's a very good thing to ask authors because sometimes I get people tell me that, oh, I got ideas from what I've seen around me. I got ideas from, you know, my personal life experiences. I get ideas from the stories of friends of friends of friends. I got ideas right. from hilariously from my dreams. I mean, what I see yeah. in dreams whenever I go to bed. I got ideas from, you know, conversation that doesn't belong to me that I've dropped on, you know, trying to be a bit gossip in nature. I got ideas from different nature, yeah. It's, it's quite amazing to get to see how people derive ideas and to write an amazing, beautiful novels. And I just feel like, I think it's a very good thing to write. And more like you mentioned, sometimes it's mysterious. You can't really tell where they're coming from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes. <laughs> it just yeah. comes. More, more like something whispering to your ear that, oh, Write right, this. yeah. Or some a voice yeah. coming to your head, yeah. Pick up your pen and write this. I've got something for you today. It's it's yeah. it's very, very surprising, strange. And I think that's one of the reasons why we, we really need to praise more writers and writers need to be praised more for their works. Yes, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your lovely answer. I enjoyed it so much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. No, apart from Song of the Lake and Great Water, Great Sea, do you have any other works if authored or say currently working on? Um, yeah, so um, I'm definitely working on getting out my, my next book, Roots of the Bay. It's the one I'm going to be really um, advertising um, now that it's coming out. Um, I've been advertising, but it's coming out um, next week. And mm. then I also have started the fourth book in the series, um, I have a book, it's called What Lies Across the Sea. I really like water, as you can tell by the names. Wow. Of my um, but this is the first book that I wrote. It's called What Lies Across the Sea. It's a standalone book. It's not a part of the series. Um, and um, that was actually the first book that I published in uh, 2021. So um, I have a goal to publish a book a year for the next 20 years. I have a lot of work that I've just been kind of um, just keeping on my laptop. I've been writing my mm. entire life and, but I haven't been sharing it with the world until, um, just recently. And so, um, I have a lot of catching up to do, so to speak and getting <laughs> my work out there. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm really excited. I, so I'm working on the fourth book right now of the series. And then I'm also working on a nonfiction piece. It's a story about my life, the things that I've struggled with, uh. Um, and my hope is that when I share that book, that people can learn, um, just be inspired and grow and, um, and kind of how I really view my life, just mm -hmm. that we can still have a wonderful joy filled life, even though there's hardships. And so, oh, wow. Um, I'm working on that book and then I'm also working on a, a project with my son. He's 11. Um, and oh, we're wow. writing a children's chapter book about, wow. about creatures and, um, dinosaurs and dragons. And wow. we're, I'm really excited about that. So. Oh, wow. That's beautiful to know. Yeah. That's beautiful to know. So you've got quite a lot on going actually, and I'm particularly intrigued with the ones you're working with your son. Sounds beautiful. I hope yeah. that goes on well, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited about that. So and so is he. So it's it's oh. a, it's fun to do with my son. So <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's a it's a beautiful thing actually, and I, I'm not quite sure if you've got uh, some authors writing in that particular you know, setting. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be very nice. It's very good yeah. to try something that is not common, something that people are not so much aware of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mother and child working together. On the children's book sounds like an interesting idea. If you get invited for now, pardon me. If you get invited to go into perhaps your featured author in a book festival, so you take your son alongside and you you to sit on the podium and they start asking you a question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what inspired the book? How did it come to be? And you give your talk. Then the uh, the pastor that he pulls the mic over to your son and he gives his own speech to. Sounds quite amazing, really. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing i'm just imagining in my head you know imaginations yeah. and writers yes. beautiful beautiful 
Yeah, you're welcome. Now, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? Are there any challenges you've encountered in the process of writing your book and also ever since it got published? Is there anything? Um, there's definitely challenges. I'm an independent author, and so mm. um, I've, I've hired an amazing editor, and I wouldn't be able to do this work without her. Um, but at the end of the day, it's completely up to me to make sure that my work is is presented to the world. And so there's a yeah. lot of challenges and trying to figure out the best way to to market and, um, you know, just figuring out the different avenues of publication. And, you know, so it was when I decided to first publish my first book, yeah. I really did a lot of research on whether I wanted to go the traditional route versus the independent route. And I really liked the idea of, of owning and, and controlling my own work. And so, um, but that's, there's definitely been a lot of challenges it's been mm. a huge learning curve for me, um, but it's something, you know, that I learn little bits and pieces of new things every time I put out a new book. And it's even though some of the steps and the things get a little bit easier now that I'm, you know, publishing my fourth book, there's yeah. still challenges that we face, you know, that I, you know, is this one going to be a success? Is this one going to get out into the world mm. the, the way I would oh, like wow. for it to? And um, so definitely, definitely a lot of challenges because at the end of the day, it's up to me to make sure all the things are doing all the things. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah, I agree with you on that, actually. Thanks for sharing. I agree with you on that. And, you know, as a published author, I like to have your idea on this and your advice. As a published author, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling? with writing and publishing a book in your particular genre, what would you advise people in this category? I like that. I love that question. Um, my advice would be to keep going and mm. not to give up because there are many times where even myself would question, is this really going to do what I want it to do? And at the end of the day, I'm writing and creating these books because I love to write and I love mm. to create. And so um, my advice would be to just keep going and any criticism that's given, um, you know, run it through a filter of, is this going to help me grow or is this just petty childishness? And so, mm, wow. um, you know, just keep going, keep moving forward and, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's yeah. a huge community of independent authors out there. And Absolutely. so, you know, asking for help is is 100% okay. And finding those people that you can work with and um, mm. and then hiring an editor. I, yeah. I wouldn't be where I'm at without the editor that I have. I've learned so many things from her. So mm. that's probably the advice that I would give. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for your lovely advice. And I'm hoping that viewers, including myself, would love to utilize it. So Esther, before we call it today, today, is there anything that you'd love to share with the viewers about your books that we did not mention in this interview and you'd love the viewers to know? Is there anything? Um, That's a good question. Um, I don't know. Just, you know, if you have a, a desire to create and write, do it, go for it. Um, and, you know, if you want to follow my work, I'm on social media, I have a website and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, if you are interested in women's fiction or women's historical fiction, definitely yeah. check out my work. Um, and then I'm, I'm really excited about the things that I have planned for the future. So oh. just keep an eye out for me and my continued work. Oh, so. that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. And just in case we have some viewers who are currently watching this interview, I would love to get a copy of any of the books or both. On what platform are they available on for purchase? Um, all of my books can be found on Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, um, and then I really wanted to be able to make sure that my books could be available. So um, local bookstores are, can usually um, order my books and that sort of thing. So uh, bookshop.org is also a, a place where people can find my, my work. So mm, Interesting. And I left a link in the description part of this interview. 
more interested viewers can get a copy of Esther Short's books directly on Amazon and Barnes & Nobles on our website and also another platform. I also left a link to our social media pages for possible followings. So thank you thank so you. much, Esther, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's awesome. And I must say it's more than awesome, actually, having this lovely conversation with you around your books. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank it's you. It's my pleasure as well. Yeah.